Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Hi, and welcome to the beer and news report. Cheers. You hear a lot about populations in decline, one of the main ones being China, and the replacement rate is 2.1 children per household. Now, why 2.1 children? Well, to replace the parents, you need two. And then just because there's illnesses or accidents or something happens, you need that point one to just make sure we get over the hump. So the replacement rate for anything is 2.1. That's going to be the focus of our show today. But not only am I going to make it uh, a worldwide view, looking at different countries and their populations, but I'm also going to get microscopic and talk about my family and just see if they're growing, are they shrinking, or are they staying the same? So grab a beer and maybe your family album, and let's start the show. Cheers. All right. As I said, if you want the population of your country to grow, you need to have a birth rate of 2.1. Most developing countries do not have this. According to the World Bank and Pew Research, China has a replacement rate of 1.18. Japan is at 1.34. Germany is at 1.53. France is at 1.83, Italy's at 1.24, ouch! And the UK is at 1.56, India is close, it's at 2.05, in the US, we're at 1.64. Now, all of these countries should see a decline in their population unless they make changes. Now, there are countries above 2.1 replacement rate. Nigeria's at 4.57, Pakistan's at 5.36, the Congo is at 5.56, and leading them all is Niger at 6.73. Now, as you can see, most of these countries with a high replacement rate are in Africa or less developed countries. But why is that? Why do developed countries have such a low replacement rate and undeveloped countries have a high replacement rate? I mean, after all, developed countries have Viagra and other drugs to help with intimacy. Well, that's coming up in the next drink. Take care. Undeveloped countries are usually agrarian, meaning that they're a society based on farming. And with farming, it helps to have a lot of kids because they can help at the farm at a very young age. I mean, how old do you have to be to harvest a crop or to pick some apples? Usually you can get them out there pulling weeds, doing something at a very young age. And so it actually helps you to have a big family because you can produce more. But as the country starts bringing in technology and gets more and more developed, there's less farming done. If you're from a developed society, before you can do work, you have to go to school and learn how to be productive, right? Your parents just can't throw you in a room and say, hey, build me some computers or fix all these cars. You have to learn how to do this and that takes time, which means the kids you have don't add value to the family until later in life. So in developed countries, kids are more of a cost to the family for a longer period of time, and that's why having more kids really doesn't make that much sense. It becomes too expensive, especially if they all want to go to college. It's to the point where kids are reconsidering if college is even really worth it. I mean, many kids are in so much debt that President Biden has to bail them out, which causes other problems that I'm not going to go into right now, maybe in another show. All right, cheers. So now you understand why some countries have large populations, and some have populations that are shrinking. But what can be done? Well, for China, they ended their one-child policy back in 2016. Now you can have up to three children, but it's kind of late, right? Because that one-child policy is really affecting them. Now, they have become more developed, and just as I said, having more than one child in, in a developed country is a cost, not a benefit. So we'll see if the one-child policy in China or change, dropping the one-child policy in China has an effect. Now, wait a minute. The U.S. also has a rate below 2.1. Won't their population decline? Well, yeah, but the U.S. isn't unique that its population is highly influenced by immigration. You see in the news all the time about our immigration issues and the amount of people trying to get in. You don't see that with China or Russia or even Japan. Most countries don't have the immigration that the United States does. Now, Germany, to its credit, when Russia attacked the Ukraine, over a million Ukrainians immigrated to Germany, and that's making their population grow. Now, there's an upfront cost with immigration. You need to house them, you need to feed them, you gotta give them medical services, you gotta get their children to school, and there's other social services. Getting them acclimated to your country and the environment that you live in, it takes time, usually over a year. 
Once this is done, though, they enter the workforce and start providing for themselves, then they become a benefit to society. Uh, the U.S. is a consumer-based society, so getting all these immigrants into our system eventually pays off, and it pays off big. Now, let's be clear. All countries try to get educated people from other countries. I remember as a recruiter looking for engineers from other countries that had a certain skill set that matched the job I was trying to fill. And basically because the United States wasn't producing enough of these type of engineers. While a lot of kids go to college, not many of them come out as an engineer. I can attest to that. Cheers. Now, let's zoom in the microscope and ask, hey, is my family growing, shrinking, or staying the same? All right, starting with my parents, they had five kids. And I know that sounds like a lot, but comparing it to my aunts and uncles, our family is one of the smallest, and this is on my father's side. Okay, so my parents passed the replacement test because five is bigger than 2.1. Now, how did their kids do? All right, well, first is my brother Armin. He had three boys, so he passed. Next is my sister Rhoda. She had three girls, so she passed. Then there's my sister Becky. She had two boys and two girls. She passed. And my sister Rachel had two boys and one girl, so she passed. And then there's me. Well, I didn't have any kids, so I'm a total abject failure. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I have no desire to have kids. Let me die in peace with my beer. Cheers. All right. So in total, that's 13 kids. Now, if we take the replacement rate of 2.1 and we times it by 5, because that's what my parents had, then we needed 10.5 kids to see if we passed. We did. 13 is bigger than 10.5. My parents passed. Now, how are the kids' kids doing, right? So my brother had three boys. His first boy had two girls and a boy, so he passed. His second boy had two boys and a girl, so he passed. And the third boy had a boy and a girl. Oh, he missed it by 0.1 kids, so he failed. But in total, they had eight kids, which passes the 6.3 that they needed as a replacement rate. So for his kids, they passed. Now there's my sister Rhoda's children. Her first daughter had two boys and one girl, so that passed. The second one has no kids, so she failed. And the third one has two girls and a boy, she passed. In total, they failed because six kids is less than the 6.3 needed. So actually her family's shrinking. My next sister is Becky. Her first boy had one boy, so he failed. The second had three girls and two boys passed with flying colors. Third one had two boys and one girl passed. The fourth one had no kids, so he's failing. In total, they have nine, which is more than the 8.4 needed, so her family's growing. All right, next is my sister, Rachel. She had three kids. The first one had no kids, so that person failed. The second one had no kids. So that person failed. And the third one had no kids, so that person failed. Obviously, that family as a whole is not passing the replacement rate because zero is way less than 2.1. But, I mean, all these kids are young. Uh, they still have a chance to have kids or adopt kids if they prefer. But now let's look at the whole family. So we started with 13 kids. So the replacement rate is 27.3. Currently, their kids' kids has 23 kids, so the family as a whole is shrinking. I know, doesn't make sense. Whenever I go to visit, there's kids all over the place. You can't go into a room without them bouncing off you. But, you know, numbers are numbers. Cheers. So I'll leave it up to you to see if your family is growing, shrinking, or staying the same. Hitting that 2.1 replacement rate is harder than you think. I totally thought my family was growing as I see kids everywhere when I'm out there. But when you look at the family as a whole, the few overachievers don't always cover the underachievers. And so is life, right? Pulling back and looking at the U.S. as a whole, immigration is more important than you might realize, within reason, of course. The current flood of immigrants from Mexico is a bit overwhelming and something needs to be done. But, you know, I think that's an aberration. You know, with proper immigration reforms, we should be able to get this under control. Yeah, cheers. Well, as you can see, my beer is almost empty. That means we're at the end of the show. By the way, I decided to put this at the end. Today, I'm drinking Sure Shot. I'm sorry, Snapshot Premium Lager by Morgan Territory Brewing. I like all lagers, but this one's kind of malty. So I'm just going to rate it as okay, right? It's something that I would drink, but I'm not going to go out of my way to buy. 
Now, if you want to contact me, I can reach at this email address. And I hope you had a good time watching the show. And and it'd be great if you can get back to me if you, you know, family's growing, shrinking, or staying the same. If you liked it, click on that like button. Of course, if you want to get notified of new shows, you click on that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it. And this will notify you when a new show has been posted. Until then, keep your beer cold and your interest hot. Cheers.